during transit, some of the star's light passes through the exoplanet's atmospheres, transformed by the atmosphere's chemical composition. This has given astronomers the opportunity to remotely study the climate of terrestrial worlds outside the solar system. And this is important because TRAPPIST-1 worlds are the most optimal worlds available to us today. They provide the first opportunities for humanity to detect signs of biology beyond the solar system. During transit, some of the star's light passes through the exoplanet's atmospheres, transformed by the atmosphere's chemical composition. This has given astronomers the opportunity to remotely study the climate of terrestrial worlds outside the solar system. And this is important because TRAPPIST-1 worlds are the most optimal worlds available to us today. They provide the first opportunities for humanity to detect signs of biology beyond the solar system. Their initial discovery was made with a small telescope. A little later, exoplanets were discovered with the Trappist Spitzer and full telescopes. Thanks to the transit signals, it was possible to measure orbital periods and calculate their sizes. The exact transit times of exoplanets also makes it possible to measure their masses, which made it possible to know the density and therefore the properties of the bulk. Astronomers have found that exoplanets conform to a rocky composition and that their sizes and masses are comparable to those of Earth and Venus. Relying on data from the distance of exoplanets to their star and the temperature of the star itself, the researchers were able to conclude that some of them receive the same amount of light as many of the planets in the solar system. From Mercury to Mars, the James Webb Space Telescope has taken its first look at a long-awaited target. The atmospheres of seven Earth-sized planets orbiting the star TRAPPIST, one just 39 light years from Earth. All seven planets are in or near the habitable zone of their star and could have liquid water in one form or another. For astronomers, this is perhaps the best known laboratory for studying planets outside the solar system for their suitability for life. Finally, the James Webb Telescope has set its eyes on these distant worlds. At the outset, it is worth noting that the telescope has confirmed that of the seven known exoplanets in the TRAPPIST, one system, three are in the habitable zone. Planets D, E, and F are the third, fourth, and fifth exoplanets. According to the measured density, TRAPPIST, Oneb, the first from the star, may either have a small nucleus or, more likely, contain a significant fraction of water or other volatiles in its composition. In view of the too high surface temperatures of the first two exoplanets, the maintenance of water in liquid form there is highly unlikely. The fifth exoplanet, F, has a fairly low density and maybe an ocean planet with space tangents in its interior. By the way, to date, it is believed that the habitable zone may be wider. If we consider volcanic hydrogen as a potential greenhouse gas, contributing to the increase in climatic temperature, the telescope also saw some similarities with Centauri Proxima. Namely, that the X-ray emission of TRAPPIST, one system approximately corresponds to the X-ray emission of Proxima Centauri, and the ultraviolet radiation produced by hydrogen atoms from the chromospheric layer of the star is already six times less than on Centauri. For this reason, the two closest exoplanets to the star, TRAPPIST, Oneb and TRAPPIST, Onec, could have lost their atmospheres and hydrospheres and hydrospheres in a time span of two to three billion years if their initial masses were similar to Earth's. However, Replenishment of atmospheric hydrogen and oxygen may occur through a reaction in which molecules of chemical compounds are broken down by photons if the planets contain a lot of water in one form or another in their composition. Currently, the James Webb Telescope has studied the exoplanet TRAPPIST on ebb in more detail where signs of a high-density atmosphere of the closest planet to the star are not detected or optically thin. 
Further observations showed that this exoplanet receives four times more radiation than Earth from the Sun and is in tidal capture. The temperature of the day side of the planet was estimated with a maximum of 260 degrees Celsius, according to telescope data. And most likely, the heat is not being distributed from the day side to the night side to the night side. Also in the new study, there's already data from a second rocky exoplanet, Trappist, Warneck, which is also in a tidal lock. The planet is interesting because it could be, in fact, a twin of Venus since it's about the same size and receives the same amount of radiation from its star, but still not as harsh, because it has a daytime temperature of about 106 degrees Celsius versus Venus's 420 degrees. And yet, it still gives you an aggressive tan. Although these first measurements do not provide definitive information about the nature of Trappist, Wunek, they help narrow down the range of possibilities. The results are consistent with the exoplanet being essentially a rock consisting of caves and rocks with no atmosphere and no living aliens, but still not as harsh because it has a daytime temperature of about 106 degrees Celsius versus Venus's 420 degrees. And yet it still gives you an aggressive tan. Although these first measurements do not provide definitive information about the nature of Trappist, Wunek, they help narrow down the range of possibilities. The results are consistent with the exoplanet being essentially a rock consisting of caves and rocks with no atmosphere and no living aliens. The James Webb Telescope is currently studying galactic nebulae and black holes, but it also has another important goal. The star system LP791-18 is 89 light years away in the constellation Cratera and has at least two planets. The system was originally found by ground and space telescopes, TESS and Spitzer. By observing the orbit of the Earth-sized planet, it was found that the surface has volcanic activity, which could lead to the existence of an atmosphere, thanks to which water can condense. Moreover, the planet is on the inner edge of the habitable zone which is neither too hot nor too cold for water in liquid form, to exist not only in the atmosphere, but also on the surface. In the same star system, there is another planet, ELP 791, 18, a more massive and larger gas giant, which in turn exerts a significant gravitational force on the Earth, like planet. The gravitational force also slightly deforms both the planet itself and its inhabitants, because of which it is observed high volcanic activity. Similar processes occur on one of the moons of Jupiter. Researchers have already received approval to study the atmosphere of LP-791, 18 with the James Webb Telescope, thanks to which it will be possible to learn more about the planet. The James Webb Space Telescope is now practically the world's premier space observatory allowing us to peer into distant worlds around other stars, explore mysterious structures, and learn more about the origins of the universe and our place in it. So far, nearly 6,000 exoplanets in 4,000 star systems have already been confirmed, with several thousand more candidates awaiting verification. Of course, the public's attention is focused on planets that are as Earth-like as possible. We have not given up hope of finding intelligent life in space. However, the bulk of distant worlds look very strange to us. There are often conditions there that we can't even imagine. After all, science fiction writers have long advised people not to fixate on our carbon-based form of life. There may be much in the universe beyond our understanding. But science exists to push those boundaries. 